Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Nick White here. I do tech encoding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Um, I uh, have all of the hack rank and leak code solutions on playlists on my channel if you want to check those out. Finishing up linked lists here, there's three more problems left on hack rank, and then we did them all. Uh, this is called cycle detection, and this one's probably the most important one. Uh, the other ones are all fundamental concepts, so you do want to make sure you have those down, so make sure you get through all of those, but this one is going to lead us into the more advanced algorithms and stuff like that. This is a base, this is a fundamental to solving actual problems that you're going to be given in interviews that are pretty hard. Um, so cycle detection. A linked list can contain a cycle if any node is visited more than once while traversing a list, right? So what is a cycle in a linked list? Well, a regular linked list would just be a list of nodes that um, contain data, maybe say one, two, three, four, five, and you can go through, you can check the values, you can use it to store data, and it's just a simple list. You traverse through, you get from head and you get to null, and then you're done, right? We know that. A cycle in a linked list would be if one node points to a node that we already traversed, right? So, for example, if we're traversing this list, it would go 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3. We'd never break out. It would be kind of like an infinite loop, for example. Um, so, given uh, complete the function in the editor below, it has one parameter, a pointer to an object named head, as usual, that points to the head of a linked list. Your function must return a boolean denoting whether or not there's a cycle in the list. If there is a cycle, return true, otherwise false. So if we find a cycle, if we see that when we traverse, we find a node that we already visited, we're going to return true because that's a cycle. So when we traverse, we we're going to traverse, let's say we traverse, we start at head, we're going to go one, two, three. If we see two and we know that we already visited it, then we're going to return, yeah, there's a cycle. If we make it through the whole thing, we should hit null eventually, right? Just like normally, one, two, three, null. And then we can just return false. There was no cycle. Uh, that's the basis of it. So we're going to get the head, and the head can be null. So if the head's null, obviously we'll just return. So if head equals null, we're going to return head because we're returning a node. Uh, no, wait, we're returning whether it has a cycle or not. If head is null, then there's no list, there's no cycle. Okay, head is null, false. Um, now, what do we want to do? How do we do this? So, you might be thinking, like, how do we know if we've seen a node, right? Because if we just do what we usually do, and we have, like, a current node uh, is equal to head, and then we do while current node is not equal to null, and we just do current node equals current node dot next. You know, how are we going to find out if we've seen it before? You know, you could use a data structure or something like that. But, you know, that's not that's not optimal. What do we want to do to do a linear scan, no extra space, and just find if we've seen a node and do this? Well, um, this is called, I would recommend looking this up. Gail Lockman, Lockman McDowell has a really good video on this. Um, and I would say watch that. She explains it super well. Um, imagine that you have uh, two race cars or two people running around a track. They're doing track and field or whatever, and they're running around a one mile field doing laps and one person's going faster than the other person. Um, if the person going faster, if the per there's a fast person running and a slow person running and they're both running at constant speed. So one of them's just slower than the other one. The fast person will eventually lap the slower person and they'll be at the same position. So, you know, we can use that by setting two node pointers, and this is a very common technique, that's why this is important, is uh, cyclic detection is important, and pointer methods and linked lists are really important. So we're going to set a slow pointer to head, and let's say we set a fast pointer to head, equals uh, head, and then slow pointer is going to be slow, go, moving slower through the linked list. So we'll do, you know, while well, fast is not equal to null, um, slow equals slow dot next, fast equals fast dot next dot next. So you can see here the slow, the slow pointer is going one note at a time, the fast is going two notes at a time. So just from that principle of like a race car or people running, if a race, two race cars are going and one's going faster and one's going slower, the fast car will eventually lap the other one and they will be parallel at the same position or at the same position um, at some point if there is a cycle. Because if it goes forever, eventually they're going to meet. So 
what our condition would be is if slow is equal to fast, then wow, dang, there's a cycle, right? We found one. And if we make it to the end and we hit a null pointer, that means we traverse the whole thing and we're fine. We didn't find a cycle. So we'll just return false, no cycle. So what's wrong with this though, right? What's wrong with this condition, right? Well, first of all, um, fast and slow are both set to head, right? Fast and slow are both set to head. So if we do a check, if slow is equal to fast, return true. At first, it's just going to say, oh, head's equal to head. So obviously, we'll just return true. That's wrong, though, because um, there could be a cycle. We just, we have to, you, there's two ways to do this. You could either start fast at head.next. So, you know, if we do this, then the fast pointer starts out a node ahead. And um, then when we do this check, obviously, these won't be true, and it'll work. And then eventually, we could find the cycle. That's going to be fine. Uh, just because they're both set at head doesn't mean that there's a cycle. Um, now, what's wrong with this? Uh, well, it we didn't check that. So if fa head, we know that head's not null because we did this check. So this isn't null. Slow's not null. Head.next could be null. So there is a problem with that because then we would be hitting null.next, which wouldn't work out. So we also have to account for fast.next is not equal to null if we do it this way. So if we submit this, this will work, right? And hopefully you guys understand this principle. Definitely check out the algorithm for this. is called Floyd's Tortoise and Hare or something like that. Um, and um, Gail's video is really good. So please check that out um, if you want to really understand this. She has like pictures and stuff. And the only other, the other way you could do this is you could have them both set to head. Um, but you just want to make sure that you... Uh, you know, loop, do a step forward before you actually um, continue with the search. So there you go. Those are both two, um, you know, tr simple traversals through the list. It's going to be way faster. Uh, no space. Uh, we're not doing extra space or anything like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's it. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. I'm doing the last two ones right now. Uh, definitely check out those other things though. Cause I'm, it's kind of a more visual involving thing to understand, but, um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.